a recent study shows that it might be a good idea to eat a lot of chocolate. This scatter plot shows that a country's annual chocolate consumption per person, so how much chocolate someone eats in a year, is positively related to the number of Nobel Prize winners per 10 million people in a country. Notice that in this scatter plot, chocolate consumption is displayed as the independent variable and the number of Nobel Prize winners as the dependent variable. The units of analysis in the scatter plot are countries. And you can see that the correlation is pretty high. In fact, the Pearson Sauer correlation coefficient here is 0 0.93. This suggests that although eating a lot of chocolate might make you fat, it also makes you smart. The Pearson Sauer tells you how strong the linear correlation between the two continuous variables is. This linear correlation can be displayed by a straight line. In our case, that's this line. This is what we call the regression line, and in this video, I'll tell you how we can find the regression line. It is important to know how we find the line, not only because the regression line shows you at a glance how two variables are related, but also because it forms the basis of many statistical analyses. So how do we find the regression line? Imagine that you draw every possible straight line through the scatter plot. So you draw this one, this one, this one, this one, and every other possible line. That's a huge number of lines, so in practice it will be almost impossible to do it. However, for now imagine that you have superhuman powers and that you are able to do it. Next, you measure for every possible line the distance from the line to every case. So in this case, to every flag in the scatter plot. Let me give you an example based on a random line, say this one. You measure the vertical distance between Japan and the line, the distance between Spain and the line, and so on, until you know the distance to the line of every case in your study. Every distance is called a residual, and you end up with positive residuals, the distances from cases above the line to the line, displayed in blue, and negative residuals, distances from cases below the line to the line, displayed in red. You measure these residuals for every possible line through the scatter plot. So, not only for this line, but also for this line, for this line, and for this line, and for every other possible line through the scatter plot. Eventually, you choose the line for which the sum of the squared residuals is the smallest, and that's this one. Why the squared residuals? Because positive and negative residuals cancel each other out. The sum of the length of the positive residuals, the blue lines, is exactly as big as the sum of the length of the negative residuals, the red lines. The best fitting line is called a regression line, and the name of the method of analysis is called ordinary least squares regression, which refers to the way we have found a line. In practice, it is almost impossible to draw every possible line and to compute for every single possible line all the residuals. Luckily, mathematicians have found a trick to find a regression line. I won't explain how this trick works here, because it is pretty complicated. For now, it suffices to know that it is based on minimizing the sum of the squared residuals. To summarize, you have learned two essential things. First, you now know how the computer finds a regression line. And second, you have learned that eating chocolate might well help you to pass this course.